Here's the most powerful weapon on this planet. What do you want? I want my children to be safe. Raised by Wolves is the brand new, intensely fascinating, mind-bending, and occasionally hyper-violent new sci-fi TV show coming exclusively to HBO Max on September 3rd. It is also legendary film director Ridley Scott's first foray into making a series like this. He has dabbled in various producing roles, but this is the first time he's actually gotten his hands dirty personally directing a serialized program like this. Ridley Scott is mostly known for his work in science fiction, most notably Alien, Blade Runner, and The Martian, some of the best sci-fi of all time, for starters but he has just as much of a track record for epic period pieces like Gladiator and Kingdom of Heaven, and Raised by Wolves feels like a perfect hybrid of the two of those worlds. Yeah, it is uh, definitely a lot of futuristic science fiction stuff, but it's got some sort of biblical themes. Uh, it takes place over a century into the future and stars a pair of androids raising human children on a distant planet, but then it goes some surprising places from there, and it weaves in some themes that are reminiscent of Scott's earlier work, like, you know, the humanity of artificial intelligence, the horrors of interstellar exploration, and travel and a smattering of biblical imagery plus growing potatoes on a different planet. I love to do that. Now, obviously, if you own a television, you already know that HBO Max has a pretty incredible track record for making TV shows with the production quality of feature films. If you don't own a television, you can also watch HBO Max, other places, but you should probably get a television. They're great. Giving Ridley Scott a full season to play around with is uh, really exciting stuff because he gets to basically get in there and just bring all of his cinema qualities into a TV show and just go nuts with it, which is super cool. Yeah, he's uh, one of my favorite directors. I've read very long hardcover books about how he makes films and learning about how he makes it is really fascinating. He's big on using practical effects and physical sets, but even before he reaches that point in production to realize his vision, he will sketch storyboards on the fly to communicate exactly what he wants a shot to look like, uh, which is falling back on his experience as a, as a sort of traditional artist. He's, he went to school for painting, worked in advertising, uh, and he also, uh, he's got a wonderful style for these storyboards. They're called Ridley Grams, and they look uh, very reminiscent of the French artist Jean Giraud, otherwise known as Mobius, who has been hugely influential in science fiction, and I feel like maybe some of his DNA has made its way into Raised by Wolves. As a sort of like huge fan of old school sci-fi, I really love digging into the creative process, looking at making of books and watching documentaries and stuff like that. So without further ado, let's take a look at how the creative process works for Ridley Scott on Raised by Wolves. Ridley is the Beatles of science fiction. It's pure cinema, the way Ridley brings these stories to life. My new show, Raised by Wolves, is just so wonderfully entertaining and fascinating. Great words speak, like great music. And as I'm reading, I can already see the film. I start to scribble boards, the sketches initially, and then it starts to take form. This majestic, brave new world, the new beginning of everything, the far future on Kepler. I've already filmed it on paper. Have him come around and walk with me. To find designs that feel like something you haven't seen before, that's something that Ridley has accomplished in a very awesome way. His storyboard process is pretty exclusive to him where he does get into that amount of detail. We've got rough storyboards for the entire episode already come out of his head for every scene. Because he comes from an art director background, you can't fool him. You've got to think like Wrigley, then you've got to go another level. Within the first few moments, this is very, very high tech. Thing will hess over a landscape and smash into rubble. They are teaching on the end of a hole, which could easily be a thousand feet deep. So already you're beginning with a problem. That's how the film begins. Oh, this is interesting. This thing here, this red ball, be thrown on the ground, it will burst open. As it's bursting open, it will form like a moving Lego kit. It will open up without them even looking at it and becomes that. When you go inside their dwelling, you're kind of entering the Middle Ages. 
We meet two people, mother and father, that are very odd in terms of their cadence and their character and their nature. As androids, 24 embryos were given to these specialized form of parents. Father will simply plug her in into six containers. So the containers are, in essence, her womb. Initiating trimester one. So we'll find later in the story, we go into a flashback. We see the destruction of a city that what's left of the world is now a ship that's already on its way, been coming for 13 years. It is called the Ark. Father, one evening, sees the Ark pass in front of the moon, thinking, oh my God, they're here. It looks like nothing I've seen before in sci-fi, totally original, and it's come straight from Ridley's head. You test it by saying, how crazy will it look? So you try and draw it. And then you think, I think that's going to work. So as you can see, Ridley Scott gets pretty hands-on all the way down to drawing costumes and sketches and spaceships and stuff. And obviously those aren't exactly how they look on the on the screen, but it's really cool to see that sort of get blocked out on paper. Yeah, I'm a big fan of sort of seeing how the sense of scale translates. Like there's this huge hole on this planet that, you know, he describes as being like a thousand feet deep and he does like a little sketch of it. And you're like, oh, that's, you know, that's sort of terrifying. And then you see it on screen and you're like, wow, this this has a presence now and I wouldn't want to fall into it. It also, like, clearly the, the costumes have this, like, medieval influence, which I think is really cool. And I'm really excited to see more. They're shooting in South Africa, so you've got these wonderful alien landscapes with, like, just gorgeous stuff happening in the background. And then, you know, you've got, like, a funny inflatable geodesic tent, which apparently they actually made one of, as you could see, kind of behind Ridley. So Yeah, that is awesome. Yeah, I feel like I would totally love just, uh, like, a coffee table book of the sketches that went into the making of this show. Uh, because it's really cool to see sort of quick, hand-drawn aesthetics turn into something that's, like, super polished and fully realized. So there you have it. Be sure to tune into the premiere of Raised by Wolves on September 3rd, only on HBO Max. They should make an HBO Brian, too. One day I'll get my own streaming site.